Hey, I'm Kelly Teresa, and I'm going to show you a little bit about um, dotting tools. And for all you beginners out there, I've had a lot of um, people asking me uh, what kind of tools I use, how, does, how do they work, what are the best tools to purchase, what do you do when you're just starting out. So I wanted to give you um, a little bit of a tutorial today on what I use and uh, what tools are available and uh, when to best use them because uh, I have quite a variety of tools and um, but I use them for different for different things so you might want to pick up a couple different varieties um, depending on what it is that you're looking for so uh, the first one that I'll show you is the stylus tools these tools have um, if you can see them but they are they have balls at the ends of them, the metal balls. A lot of um, salons will use these for uh, nails, for decorating nails. Uh, these are probably the ones that I use the most, um, this style. Um, you can get them in a bunch of different sizes, which is cool, all the way up to like really, really big. Um, I don't tend to use these ones quite as often because I don't have as much control over this. Uh, for the bigger dots, but I will show you the tool that I do use when I am trying to create those bigger dots. Which is next, which is um, your dowels. So dowels are, they have a flat end. Um, you can purchase wooden ones at the craft store. Um, they're super simple. I think they come in a pack of like 20 or 50 for, I think you can't even get them at the dollar store, honestly. And um, they work awesome, or uh, they do have the plastic reusable ones that are washable. Um, mine tend not to be as washable, um, just they tend to collect paint. Um, but uh, every so often, I'll uh, clean them up and um, have them good to go again, looking brand new. So, those are kind of your main two styles of dot, uh, dot tools. And um, I will show you in a minute how to use each of those ones effect most effectively. Uh, another tool that I use uh, quite often um, is my toothpick. And this is for a lot of the detailing work. Um, I used to use wooden toothpicks and then I found that um, I was getting pretty frustrated having to use three, four, five, sometimes six uh, toothpicks in one painting because the ends do get frayed and then you don't get that nice clean dot. So I did purchase a, um, it's a baker's tool. So it's actually a metal toothpick. And I just found this at Michael's. And if you don't have any um, craft stores or baking shops around you, um, I will post a link to Amazon where you can find it online. And this is a must have. Um, I use this in every, every single painting that, that I do. So if you, you could start off with the wooden toothpicks, if you find you're getting just as frustrated as I was, um, then you can pick up a metal toothpick and uh, it's really awesome. One of the other tools that I actually use um, really often and I actually made it, it was one of the first tools I ever made because I didn't want to purchase um, a bunch of tools before I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So I created a few tools just to uh, get started and I ended up loving this one um, and it's one of my favorites still and I use it all the time. It's actually just a pencil with a with a thumbtack at the end of it. So it is really that simple. You take your pencil and you just pop the thumbtack into the eraser at the end and it is amazing. This is one of my absolute favorite tools. Um, it does create that type of dowel. Um, but again, if you are looking just to get started, um, making something like this is probably something that you already have at home. And uh, another one, um, is also with a pencil and you just take one of the little head pins I guess I don't know what it is a little nail with a the flat bottom on the end as well and just stick it into the eraser and you have another awesome dotting tool again I'm gonna show you how all of these work in a minute when I take you down to my sketchbook here but I just wanted to show you uh, these ones you can also again if you're at home and you're just trying to Figure out if it's something that you really like, um, ends of pen, uh, paintbrushes, uh, ends of crochet hooks, need knitting needles. Uh, I actually went to the beach. I didn't have a tool that was wide enough for the circle that I needed, so I actually went to the beach and got some driftwood and sliced it and uh, created a dotting tool here because uh, often these uh, driftwood twigs are, are perfect little circles. 
So there's a lot of really creative ways that you can create tools before having to purchase tools, um, before you're getting too serious. So let's take you down to my sketchbook here and I'm gonna show you how these work. Okay, so let's start off with the stylus since that tends to be uh, one of the most popular tools. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna use my as you can see, a lot of paint on my, my tools that I tend to... One of the things I uh, found, you can obviously clean it off when you're using it, but sometimes the really nice things about the stylus is, is it just pops off when you need it. So this is your stylus, and um, most often your tools are going to come with one size on one end and one size on the other, and there's many different sizes as you can see. And again, I'll post a link to Amazon um, where you can just take a look and see uh, if there's something that's right for you. And uh, so I'm going to show you the stylus. The styluses are, uh, you're going to use them all the time. You really are. Um, you can't always do the dots that you need with the dowels. The dowels are amazing and I am going to show you how to use these ones because there is a specific way you do need to use these in order to get your um, perfect little dot but your your dowel is only going to take you so far with some of the techniques. So I'm just going to show you your basic dot here with the stylus. Pretty simple and this one is the best thing about the stylus is is that you can take your stylus and create descending dots. This is what your dowel is not going to be able to do for you. Um, it just, it doesn't work because um, it's just got your flat end on it and your, your stylus just helps you create this descending dot. So if you were to, let's see, I'm gonna show you actually my pencil one here. Uh, let's. So if you're going to create your, say your center dot or one of your dots around your mandala. Let's get that one nice here. Okay, so you've got your large dot that you've got on your, your artwork here and you're going to take, let's see here one of your tools. Now you can do this in two different ways. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make another dot here because I'm going to show you what it looks like when you have two different sized styluses doing the same technique. Okay, so I'm going to use, basically this is kind of my, this is my main tool that I use all the time. And um, I'm going to show you, this is kind of the second second step up size here. So if you're starting at your top or your bottom, kind of get your one larger dot. And then you're going to be able to go all the way around in your... Now here you're only really dipping one time and then creating your descending dots. If you're dipping each time you're not going to create that descending dot because you're getting the same amount of paint. So this is going to show you how um, this is where your little, actually your toothpick comes in handy because if you want to go all the way around, this is when you take your smaller, smaller tool to create those tiny dots on the bottom. And we'll go around on the other side here too. So you create your one big dot and then your smaller dots again, only dipping the one time to create that dissension the smaller dots so there you go so that's with the kind of your bigger of the two and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do some of your smaller dots here so you can get some really good fine detail happening when you're using the, your smaller tools yes it takes longer but the attention to detail is definitely worth it in the long run. Oops. 
Again, I'm using my toothpick to come around to those tinier, tinier spots. So that's kind of what your stylus is really, really good at. That's the, the huge benefit of having the stylus is, um, is being able to do those descending dots. And of course, creating your other dots, your filler dots. So if you're, you know, just wanting to fill in around, creating varieties of sizes, that's, this is your stylus. And it's good for, yeah, so many things. You're definitely gonna be using it quite often. But this is also the same thing that you're, um, this is the paintbrush, end of a paintbrush. So the paintbrush is gonna pretty much do the exact same thing, let's see. So you're gonna be able to get that same descending um, dot pattern with your with the end of your um, paintbrush. Okay, so that's kind of your stylus um, tool. Uh, really helpful, really uh, fun to use. Now, when you're using your dowels, which is your flat end, flat end here, um, I'll use the wooden one so you can see. You can see how the end is flat. And actually, where did my, oh, very similar to what the thumbtack is. Flat at that end. And um, so now I said that we had to use a special, or there's a special way to use your tool, your dowel tools um, to create that clean dot. You just wanna dip your paint in just enough to cover the end of your dot. If you're dipping your tool all the way into your paint and getting the sides of your dowel with paint, that's when you're gonna get a, a pretty messy dot. So I'm gonna show you both here. So uh, let's see. So I've dipped it in and I just have it at the end. I don't know if you can see, but right at the end, not on the sides. And this is where we're going to get a nice clean dot with our dowel. Now, if I were to dip it in all the way in and we're getting some good coverage here on all over the place, you're not going to get quite as clean of a dot. And you're not, you're not going to have as much control um, when you have the edges covered in paint. You want to have as much control as possible uh, when you are using your dotting tools and, and creating those circles because, you know, it's all about the circles, right? It's all about the dots and uh, wanting to get those dots as perfect as possible. So again, this is my thumbtack paint um, on the pencil and I have not dipped it all the way in. I've only dipped the top layer in in order to get it covered. And this is where we're gonna see those beautiful perfect dots and uh that's again oh that's again with the um tool that has the, the nail at the end again that's a dowel so you're going to want to just dip the end in now if you were to look and see here i'll show you uh let's see here so your dowels are not going to create your see they just don't create the descending dots that um that your stylus does right so your dowels are basically for your your big main dots i find and like i had said so when i was talking about this large stylus it's okay i mean it i just find that i do not have as much control over the size of my dot or the shape of my dot when the styluses are this big. So that one's not too bad actually, but I tend to not use it because it's not um, sustainable really in, in how often I can actually get it in those perfect, perfect circles. So I tend to use my dowels for larger dots. I just find I have a lot more Lot more control over the size of it because that is the pressure of it so that I pushed very very lightly like 
like barely touched the paper really. And I can make it bigger by pushing down a little. And again, you want to go slow with your dowel, otherwise you're going to have spray out on the bottom. This one I'm pushing down all the way almost to the paper. I, try not to touch your paper because that's when you're going to start lifting paint off. Like these ones here, I was, it was started, the paint was starting to, it was lifting off of the paper. So you don't really want to touch your paper or your canvas with your, your dowel. You want to just have it just enough where you're, you're being able to put the, put the paint on the surface. So if I were to push this down quite quickly with my paint on it, chances are, oh, of course that's all. Um, you're going to get some spray out. You're not going to get a nice clean. See, this is this is what's happening. I don't know if you can see that, but what's happening when I push down on my um, on my canvas, you're just not getting that same beautiful clean circle that um, if you're just going lightly. Um, again, with with the dotting, I mean, I've seen, you know fast dotting and you know that's awesome if you know but I tend to uh, take my time and go slow because you know some of these paintings can take hours and if you kind of rush it then and you mess it up then all of that hard work is gone so I tend to uh, just take my time and um, enjoy the process of it as well right so it's all about it's all about the process as well as your final product and uh let's see here i'm going to show you my big my big tool just because it's fun and uh, this is my driftwood creation sometimes the dowels just are not quite big enough and so this one's just kind of it's just kind of a fun tool to use as well with uh that natural natural feeling so that's my large my large dot with um my driftwood tool so that's kind of it guys this is um how most of these tools work again uh where's my little toothpick toothpick super essential to have stylus really great to have um, pretty much pretty essential too if you want to do any of the descending dots and then the dowels are really great for getting that steady um, larger circle so uh, definitely pick up a variety of tools or create a variety of tools um, these are your tiny dots this is this is that toothpick right and you can just create so many awesome little fine details when you're um when you have your tiny tiny dots and uh you can go all the way around oh actually i am going to show you another one more trick with these tools as well once i go all the way around here because once i start i can't stop it's, it's a little bit of a an obsession there okay so one more trick I'm going to show you here with the tools. Let's see. So you're going to need two tools for this, uh, your toothpick and um, one of your styluses, whichever one, whichever size you want to create is totally fine. But let's see this. Um, so for this one, you kind of want to have a, a, a thinner paint, not too thin, but um, your thick paint is, is not going to um, create this clean swoosh. We're going to do the swoosh. I'm sure a lot of you have seen, if you've been looking and following um, any dot painters out there, you'll see that a lot of them are doing this little swoosh. And um, it's super fun to do. It took me a while to really uh, get the hang of it, but um, I'm going to show this to you here. So let's take blue this time. We haven't done blue, I don't think, here. So let's see here. I'm going to move my, actually, you know what? I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so you can, I can be sure that you're going to be able to see this. So you're going to create your dot here, whatever size you want. You want to have a little bit of a, little bit of a puddle of paint here. Not too, too much, but a little bit. And you're going to take your toothpick and this is where you're going to be able to 
draw out some of that paint with your toothpick to create that nice swoosh and just fill in the little gaps there you can even take some of your toothpick and get a little bit more paint and fill it in so this is one of those ones like um just kind of that fun design that you can create where it's not all straight dots so you're just pulling out your I'll do another tutorial on um, with creating an actual mandala. Um, we'll just take it step by step and I'll show you how to do some more of these techniques actually bringing it into your piece. Where Where's a good place to place it and, uh, and we'll create a mandala together. And so I would ask or suggest that you uh, subscribe or you can you can subscribe here or um, to my Instagram or even uh, email on my website at www.kellytresa.com and I will post when I am creating new videos and uh, techniques. So there you have it. There's your little fun, I don't even know what you want to call it, swoosh. Um, there's another way you can do this here, and this is actually when you're going around circles. And let's see here. Let's take this one. You don't really need your toothpick. You're just gonna do use your one of your smaller tools. So this is a fun one where you do. Let's do green I'm gonna do descending dots on one side and then you're gonna take your dotting tool again your stylus and you're gonna go on this side you're gonna drop your dot but you're not gonna let go of it you're gonna drop it and then you are going to drag slowly drag your stylus to create that swoosh around your circle. This kind of makes me more like a, like a little, little fun little snake that's coming around your your dot. Oh, see, and I totally messed that up. <laughs> it's running into my other paint here. Let's try that again. Let's try it on one of the dots that's already kind of semi dry here. So you drop your dot and you drag your tool. And then you can even use a smaller tool to bring out that tail a little bit more. Now let's put some dots around on this side. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless really, right? How the things that you can do and create. I mean, we've got a lot of people out there who are dot painting now, um, and everybody does does quite different and unique things. So the possibilities are really endless. And so this is it for uh, the tools. And I'm just gonna bring it back up this way a little bit. Hi. And so that's it for the tools and I'm going to do a couple more videos, um, hopefully in the next little while, uh, creating, creating the mandala, um, blending colors. That's another one that um, a lot of people have asked me about and um, transitioning colors. So either transitioning colors from, um, you know, shades of blue or actually contrasting colors. And uh, I'll show you uh, a couple examples of that as well. So stay tuned because um, I have a lot more coming about uh, tutorials, workshops, um, that kind of thing. So if you are interested in learning more, then um, let's do this together and we'll see you soon. Bye.